Good morning. Good morning. This is the Apostle. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday afternoon. I'm getting ready to get started with the word. I was supposed to start at 12 o'clock. I was running a little behind. You know us women, amen. So guess what? I wanted to share this with you. This young lady on yesterday gave me this at a program, a prophetic young lady that's a dancer. I absolutely love her. Thank you so much for the blessing. It's a prayer cloth, and it has all these healing scriptures on it. It's absolutely beautiful. I thank God for all types of gifts because you never know. God is in the blessing business, amen. So this is the apostle. This is the time I used to come in to share and uh, just following what God is doing in this new season. So I wanted to come in and talk a little bit about what's going on and what I'm up to. And sometimes I forget. I get busy. I get talking and get to talking fast and forget some uh, great details. So I wanted to go back and share again. You can. Uh, I am the author of 90 Day Anointing. You can uh, check this out on Amazon. It's also out at Barnes & Noble, uh, the Trinity Broadcast Network, the TBN Bookstore, wherever books are sold. It is in ebook form. It is a hardback, uh, and you're able to get a copy today. Amen. So uh, my site is a square site. You can, it's S. Callier Publishing. Uh, you can uh, get a copy from there. So... I will leave more details in the comments as I go along because typically I will, like when I put in information, it looks like sometimes I don't, I'm not able to get it to go where I want it or, you know, they kind of change these things on social media so often. So anyway, I'll be talking out of 2 Corinthians, let me see, 4, 16 through 18. We'll be talking about necessary discomfort. That's what I heard the Spirit of the Lord saying this morning. We need to talk about that. Amen. So I'm going to step away just a second. I think I have a, a fan on. I don't really need that. I think it's making me a little dry. Give me one second. Amen. So guess what? We're going to go ahead and get started again. If you would like to check out a copy of my book, 90 Day Anointing It Details. It's a travel memoir that details my... Uh, uh, well, as being a sent one, sent to Western Europe, uh, uh, sent to the nations many years ago when I was a young woman. And uh, I've been back, I thought I was in retirement, but guess what? God has called me to another mission. So Fall Fire Zambia 21, I want to make sure I'm giving uh, everyone an opportunity to know what's really going on. So now through prayer and just really waiting on the Lord for many, 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 many years, many prayers, I finally feel like he has spoken to me on some things I have been waiting to hear for many years. And um, that is where he's saying that, um, sending me on another uh, mission to another country. I'm just really shocked about that. But guess what? I am a person that I'm going to do whatever the Lord has asked me to. I'm going to make sure that I'm... Uh, going to be about my father's business so i'm really trying to make sure that people can share the broadcast so let me just go in and make a couple of adjustments how are you all on this afternoon i hope you all are feeling well and doing fine and that you are uh having an awesome day amen but this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it amen i thank and praise god for being woke this morning for being in my right mind, for giving me a mind to want to serve him. Amen, my viewer. Thank God. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. I actually, I had um, been on early this morning on Clubhouse doing prayers. And uh, so I was moving over to the platform to do my word for the day. So if you ever like to join me, just inbox me or let me know. Or, or usually I typically share... Uh, the icon. Uh, I typically share the icon for Clubhouse when I come on and you just uh, click that link and it should lead you through the process where you're able to get into the room where we do prayer in the morning. So we're doing 90 days of prayer on Clubhouse leading up to my uh, mission, new mission trip to Zambia. 
uh, uh, going to do the soul winning crusade. God bless you. It's um, Prophetess Chi Chi Amen. It is her host uh, country, and um, I'm just excited about what they're doing. I really mentioned just the uh, what God had spoke to me, and uh, she put some people in front of me to share what God had spoke with me to me about, and they just they just took it on to another level. So I thank and praise God for all the work that the people in the country are doing. Thank you so much. It is for the souls to go and refresh the pastors, the ministers to speak a word over them, to bless them, amen, to go and be about my father's business, amen. Hello, you all. Good morning. This is the Apostle. I'm coming in just to share this afternoon. I was on again Clubhouse this morning praying. And forgive me, I'm just a little parched. need to get something to drink. But I'm going to be talking about necessary discomfort this morning. That's what the Lord had shared with me. And so necessary discomfort. So we'll start in 2 Corinthians 4 and 16. So again, I think I have for, uh, neglected to put up if there is uh, opportunity for people to want to sow into the ministry and sow into the missions trip, amen. There will be opportunity to do that. I'll go back and add that on later, amen. So it's never too late to sow a seed. You always want to make sure that you're being involved to advance the kingdom in order to be able to do that. It takes money, amen. And so I don't, Minds Over the Midwest is my ministry. And I will put the uh, link in the uh, the description. So anyways, we'll be getting started here in just a second again. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, just give me just a second. We be having so many things we have to do to try to get ready, amen, to try and get ready to share the Word of God. So with 2 Corinthians I'll pull that out in just a second. Four, and then, like I said, it's a little bit uh, a little bit different how I used to do it when I was coming on with live. So I have to um, I have to get with the program, amen. <laughs> second Corinthians. Okay, okay, I got it. Four through sixteen. Okay, so fourth chapter, sixteenth through the eighteenth verse, amen. Okay, so we're going to say that. Okay, okay, amen. So we got that done, got that out of the way. That's awesome. So you can catch me uh, here on Sundays at noon, Central Time. Air, and typically I will come on with Prophetess Chi Chi. Uh, we do things together, but uh, I think she's having some other challenges. I talked with her this morning. We had prayers this morning, but God bless her. And whatever she has going on, I know the Lord will make a way and she will be okay. Amen. We just keep her lifted up in prayer. Man, she's a young woman as well. It doesn't matter how young you are. We have things that are going on. So I pray the ease to her troubled mind. Uh, give her comfort in whatever situation she is in. So necessary discomfort. Let's talk about that. That's not really a subject that we talk about. And it's not really a subject matter that people typically want to talk about discomfort. What is discomfort? As a noun, in short, it means pain. And as a verb, discomfort, it says to make one uneasy or anxious. Hmm. What's that about? So let's go to 2 Corinthians 4. 16 through 18 and let me change out to my reading glasses because these are not it i think i was looking for them and uh some kind of way we got separated amen <laughs> so i have a pair that i keep in here on my desk because i have to be able to get to the word at a moment's notice and i got to be able to read with clarity amen you know we've been going over these scriptures for a long time your eyes get a little old amen from time to time but I thank and praise God for the gift of sight. So we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. It says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen 
For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. So we're going to be talking today, 2 Corinthians 4 chapter, that was verse 16 through 18. We're going to be talking about necessary discomfort. Amen. Discomfort causes you to make an assessment. It will let, next make you to accept, you will have to accept the situation it will cause you to take action. That's called the triple threat. The triple A. So amen. Necessary discomfort. Discomfort is the feeling of irritation, soreness, or pain that though is not is not severe, but is annoying. Amen. <laughs> amen. Necessary discomfort. It is a feeling of irritation, soreness, it's a pain. It's not severe, but it's annoying. Amen. The discomfort is annoying. That means it may be dull. It may come and go. It may be intermittent. But guess what? If there is necessary discomfort, it creates a problem that needs to be solved. Amen. Although it may not be urgent, it may not be expedient at this moment. But discomfort is necessary because it's going to make you do something. It's going to make you assess the situation. After you assess it, you have to accept what's going on. And once you accept it, you are going to be responsible for putting some action behind that thing. That's a triple threat. That's triple A. Amen. People got triple A insurance on the side of the road when you break down. Amen. Got some assurance on the side of the road. So, necessary discomfort. Discomfort, it creates problems that need to be solved. Discomfort also creates space for need and solutions. Amen. When the Lord allows discomfort in your life, it creates a need because there is a problem. There is some type of void. There is something that needs to be created to fill that void. And so that's what we're talking about, 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 16 through 18. It's saying our afflictions in, in verse 17. It says our light afflictions is for a moment, but is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. This verse is talking about there is necessary discomfort. In verse 16, it says we don't lose heart. Why? Because even though the outward man, even though we may be aging, even though we may be expending energy every day we wake up seeing like we praying and ain't nothing happening. It said our inward man is being renewed day by day. Amen. Every day you wake up, isn't it amazing no matter what you're going through? If you keep your focus on God, he will renew your strength. He will ask, he will put you in a position where you'll just put your foot in front of the other and you just keep going. Even though you may feel like you want to faint. You may feel like you want to give up. But when God gets involved in the situation, he blows, he gives you some new strength. He give, he, he put some new wind under your wings. Amen. I'll be getting ahead of myself. I'll be excited. The verse we're talking about, 2 Corinthians 4 chapter 16 through 18 are the verses. It's called the necessity the necessity of discomfort. Amen. Discomfort, as I said, it causes you to make an assessment of what's the issue. Once you assess the issue, you have to accept that there is a problem. And next, once you accept there is a problem, it will be necessary for you to take action. Amen. This is called necessary, the necessity of discomfort. Amen. So discomfort causes us, discomfort produces, discomfort produces action or movement. If you go back to the definition that I shared, discomfort is the feeling of irritation, soreness, or pain. Though it is not severe, it is annoying. That means it won't leave you alone. It keeps nagging at you. It won't just go on one way or the other. It's a dull ache. It's day and night, night and day something that's painting you the necessity of discomfort is necessary that's what the word tells you in 2nd Corinthians 4 
and 17. These light afflictions are doing what? It's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. Discomfort causes us to confront the issue. Amen. When you got discomfort, it may not be severe, but it's annoying. You got to address those issues. Amen. Discomfort causes you to escape the doormat syndrome. That means you don't want to be a person. People are just walking all over you. Amen. Discomfort. It's annoying. You have to speak up for yourself. Guess what? The religious spirit and the traditional spirits in the land have taken root and festered in silence and acquiescence. Why? Because the necessity of discomfort did not provoke people to speak up. They knew what they heard wasn't right. They knew it sounded crazy, but because they didn't speak up, guess what? The traditions of man make the word of God of no effect. Amen. Tradition and religion will take over if you don't speak up. If you're a Christian and the truth of God is in you and the Holy Ghost resides on the inside of you, the spirit of truth, it will make you discomfort. It will make you uncomfortable when you hear stuff that's not the truth. When you hear stuff that sounds like a lie. When you hear stuff that looks convoluted and it looks like they don't seem like what I read. That doesn't make sense. Amen. That's discomfort in your soul. It's necessary to make an adjustment when there is discomfort. Amen. Let me slow down. I'm going to... It says discomfort. It will take root when you don't confront issues. Amen. It'll cause you to be in a situation in domestic violence where you are being beat. Amen. But the discomfort should cause you to speak up. Amen. Ask for help. Amen. Another way discomfort, the necessity of discomfort causes many to speak out advocate for others just like social justice issues amen we want to be a person that don't ignore the annoying discomfort don't ignore that irritation don't ignore that thing that makes you feel like you have passion to do something about it don't ignore when god is doing something in your life giving you new things to see opportunities where you have it makes you feel like oh i can't stand to see things like that you have a burden for that you wake up at night feeling like you need to do something about it. You can't unsee it. You can't unhear it. Amen. You feel like it's driving you day and night and night and day. That is the necessity of discomfort. It is speaking to you to do something about it. Do something about what you see. Do something about what you hear. Do something about what you know. Do something about it in your sphere, your community, your region, your area, your home, your personal life. Amen. Many times we can't move past the discomfort and our life trying to minister to other people we have to what it say charity begins at home and then spread abroad another way to say it sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine amen another word get the speck out of your eye before you try to figure out how to get the big beam out of mine amen let me get that speck out of yours amen i'm just telling the truth people don't be wanting to hear my church amen the necessity of discomfort it is going to create something greater than where you are. It's going to produce something more than what you've seen. Amen. The discomfort, the necessity of discomfort. Discomfort makes us pray. We pray until we see change. Amen. Prayer, it gives you a burden for what you have seen, a burden for lost souls, a burden for prison ministry, a burden for widows, a burden for different ministries. God gives us necessary discomfort, the necessity of discomfort. And you can frame your future with your words. Did you know that? When discomfort comes, there is a call to action to do something about it, to do something about the situation when the discomfort comes. The necessity of discomfort. Amen. You need discomfort to make you get on your game. You need discomfort to make you get on your knees. You need discomfort to make you so in faith. You need discomfort to make you serve through your feelings. You need discomfort. Even though you're offended, you still press on. Those are the tools of faithfulness that's going to allow you greatness in the things of God. You have to get in position to understand these things. Discomfort is necessary.
Listen, when you're comfortable, you don't do nothing. When you're comfortable, you don't pray. When you're comfortable, you don't help. When you're comfortable, you're not looking for nobody to help because you're just self-absorbed with your own things. You're not looking outside trying to find a way to continue to advance the kingdom. Amen. He says discomfort is necessary because if you was uncomfortable being overweight, he would dis the discomfort of being overweight will make you go on a diet. Amen. It will make you exercise. It will make you change your eating habits. It will make you change your weight, your, your thoughts about food. Amen. The discomfort of pain in your chest, it will make you investigated enough to go to the emergency room. I'm just talking. I'm just giving you examples of necessity of discomfort. When there is discomfort, it's a call to action. It's not severe. It's a pain. It's an irritation. Not severe, but it's not. It's going to make you do something about it. Why? Because it's annoying. It's just under the surface. It's enough to get on your nerves. It's enough to not let you get all your sleep out. It's enough not to let you be comfortable. You got to do something about it. You got to address the discomfort. Discomfort of bad treatment in the relationships make you check your self-worth, whether you need to go to counseling with this person or get a divorce. Amen. You got to understand the discomfort, the necessity of discomfort. It produces the necessity of discomfort creates need for solutions to a problem. Amen. Amen. Discomfort in your soul makes you seek after God. Amen. Discomfort from holding grudges. It drains your energy and it is a waste of time. Amen. Discomfort pre presents as arguments, jealousy, general intolerance in a group or setting. D guess what? If you have discomfort in arguments or in a present group or setting, if you're experiencing jealousy or general intolerance in a group, a church, a ministry, a setting, guess what? It may be time to reevaluate changing friends, changing that group. Changing environments, changing your atmosphere for maximum growth. Amen. Discomfort squeezes you into another realm of commitment. Discomfort squeezes you into a situation where you can't relax until you figure out what's the problem. Amen. It's annoying. It's right under the surface. It's an irritation. It won't let you rest. It won't let you forget about it. It keeps haunting you. Keep coming back. You keep seeing signs of it. Things keep telling you. It's time to do something about this. Amen. Necessary discomfort makes you go to the doctor. Necessary discomfort makes you check out things before you go and jump and leap. Amen. Necessary discomfort makes you look up things instead of just going hog wild. Amen. Because you have fallen into difficult situations in the past. It's necessary. That's what the word says. For our light affliction. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. Our discomfort, necessary discomfort is for his glory. Amen. The discomfort is necessary. We are not obligated to put up with discomfort. Amen. We need to do something about it. Weapons to fight against discomfort is prayer, is worship, making a plan to stick consistently to the things that are going to allow and establish good behaviors, good things to happen, and put us around good people in the best environment. Amen. Don't let the devil have you in a holding pattern because of fear. Discomfort is there for you to assess what is the cause, how to best to approach the solution, and diligence in addressing it. Amen. Anyone that causes discomfort, anything that causes discomfort needs addressing. It may be a sign God saying it's time to move. It's time to change. It's time to elevate. It's time to fight. 
It's time to wake up. It's time to retreat. Ecclesiastes 3, the third chapter, talks about the times and season. Amen. The discomfort is needed for a catalyst as a catalyst to change. Amen. That's what necessary discomfort is about. Necessary discomfort. We need to be uncomfortable from time to time. If we were comfortable, if Rosa Parks was comfortable on the bus, we would not never, we would be riding on the bus now. If she didn't give up her seat to a man, a white man, and said, I'm not doing that. Amen. She made her man up today is the day. I'm tired of them annoying me. This is an irritation, and I'm going to do something about it. I'm not going to get up. Amen. What you going to do? Amen. When God comes to you with necessary discomfort when he sends discomfort your way when he sends these light afflictions your way the word says in second corinthians 4 and 16 we do not lose heart amen pick up the, your your pick up the pieces you know get your wind back sit down if you need to catch your breath do that but don't get out of the race keep on going keep it says these afflictions are light which is but for a moment, amen. Eternity is forever. This is just for a season, amen. The necessity of discomfort. It is needed to push you to another level. Discomfort is needed to make you look around and figure out why am I not surrounded by the positivity I need? Why am I seeing the blessings off of my seeds I'm throwing? Why am I seeing, not seeing the things you have said in your word that I am that I can have, but I don't see it come to pass in my life? And when he says the tests and trials, we got to make sure we're passing them. Don't flunk your tests and trials and just give up. You'll never get to the other side unless you come complete the task. Amen. So the discomfort, the necessity of discomfort, they're, necess they're necessary. Discomforts are necessary to drive you to your knees. It drives you to a place of prayer. It drives you to the word for answers. Discomfort creates problems that need solving. Amen. I thank you for tuning in today. This is the apostle. I just came by to share a little one this morning. I want to go again and share about my mission trip to Zambia. It's Fall Fire, Fall Fire 2021. I will be heading to Zambia, Monza, Zambia, to do a, a three-day soul-winning crusade to train some pastors, do some teaching, leadership teaching, and I'm soliciting your help to make that happen. If you're able to sow, it is dollar sign Cali Who, dollar sign C A L I H O U. Minds over the Midwest is my cash app. Minds over the Midwest is my ministry. I'm in the Mid Midwest. I'm a mind in the middle of America, reaching across the globe, solving problems. Amen. That's what it's about. The necessity of discomfort. I was sitting in my house being comfortable, and God stirred that. He stirred up my comfort by giving me a burden, allowing me to hear the voices of the souls of those crying out for salvation, those crying out for deliverance, those crying out for a savior, those calling on the name of Jesus. He allowed me to hear the cries of the people in uh, across the world in this region where I'm going and I tell you the discomfort, the necessity of discomfort. I needed to hear that because I could not lay it down. I couldn't act like I didn't hear it. I couldn't act like it was nothing. I heard the cries of souls that want to be saved. I heard the cries of souls that are crying out to God. Will somebody come and see about us? Amen. Is this gospel real? Are you real? Is your word real? You said you will come and see about us. So God, oh, listen, prayer is where dreams are birthed. Prayer is where the will of God is birthed in the earth. You got to be praying. You got to be seeking the Lord. You got to be in a position where you are hearing from God and God is hearing from you. Amen. He's able to get information to you when you're in the spirit realm, when you are seeking in the spirit, seeking, knocking, searching after him. Amen. He will give you assignments. He will give you strength and he will give you information. Amen. So I just want again to solicit your prayers and solicit financing and anyone that would like to partner with me to go to the country of Zambia, the land of Africa. Amen. I've never been. It will be an awesome experience. I'm sure it will be dynamic for me on, on just on the sense that these are beautiful people, indigenous people that I've never seen. I've never met. I, I just know that they are crying out 
for someone to come and help them. And the Lord sent out a cry to me. Amen. That's what I'm saying. When you pray, get on your knees. The necessity of discomfort. Amen. It makes you uncomfortable. It'll make you pray. Uncomfortable will make you get up out of your personal mind, your personal life, your personal things, and make sacrifices for those that are less fortunate. Amen. You know why? So I have some scriptures I wanted to share. Some more scriptures. Amen. So guess what? He says, the necessity of discomfort. And so why does he allow it? So 2 Corinthians 1, 5 through 6. Let me go there real quick. 2 Corinthians 1, 5 through 6. Why does the necessity, why is discomfort necessary? Because 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 1, I will start at 4. Amen. Well, I'll start up at 3. I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 1. 3 through 6. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Amen. God has comforted us. And so therefore, the necessity uh, the uh, the necessity of the the necessity of the discomfort is so that when you come through it and God comforts you, now you're then able to comfort those that are going through similar tribulations, similar trials. It says in in First Second Corinthians one verse five, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we ourselves suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Amen. It's a win-win situation. You're able to identify with Christ when you're going through the discomfort. Amen. He's able to bring you through it. And once you go through it, you're able to comfort those around you with the same comfort. You're able to give them these scriptures. You're able to share the word of God with them. You're able to speak peace into their mind. You're able to pray for them because now you have delivering power in the area where you have been delivered. Did you know that? You can go and pray and people will be delivered under the same things God have delivered you from. That's why it's important to get delivered. You have to be free in areas to free other people. You can't free people in areas where you are still bound. So I'm just sharing. Discomfort is necessary. It's necessary to make you grow. It's necessary to make you press. Amen. Here is another reason why he allows discomfort. Let me go to Second Peter. Now, Second Second Corinthians four, verse sixteen through eighteen is sharing. He allows uh, necess the necessity of discomfort because it creates in us a far more uh, exceeding weight of glory. Amen. When you walk into the room, Amen. It's glory on your life when you go through something with God. Amen. It's some glory that you can share with people. Amen. It's his presence. That's what the glory is. You're the glory carrier when you go through something and you survive through things. Amen. You have glory in your belly when you come in a room. You're able to shift the atmosphere. Amen. When you're a prophetic person and there is glory on your life. Amen. You're able to change things. You're able to change things. Amen. You are an agent of change when you are a glory carrier. Amen. So you need to allow the discomfort to work in your behalf. Have. Work on your behalf. It's going to work in your favor. I know it says the irritation and it's annoying. It's getting on your nerves. It's been there longer than you hope. It's a deeper than you want. You want to scratch the itch, but you can't quite get to it because you got to ride it out. You got to be patient because God is allowing that thorn in your flesh because it's going to create something. Amen. The unnecessary discomfort is what we're talking about. The necessity of discomfort. Amen. 1 Peter 5, 9 through 10. We're going to read that. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Amen. He telling you, you ain't nothing special for real. Because what you're going through, your brethren in the world, they're going through the same thing. If you're a believer, he said you're supposed to stand steadfast. I'm 2 Corinthians 5. I'm sorry. 1 Peter 5, 9 through 10, we're coming up with reasons why he allows a discomfort in your life. 
Amen. So we're in six. First Peter 5, 9 through 10. We read 9. It says, Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the grace of God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. He allows discomfort because eventually if you go through it, you can identify the sufferings of Christ. You can comfort and console your brothers and sisters. Amen. By the grace of God. But in the end, it will mature you. He says perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. You will be a mature Christian. You'll be able to withstand anything. You'll be able to go through it and come out on the other end smelling like rose. This. You will not be like other people. You will have strength. Amen. You will be able to resist the enemy. You will be able to fight against the things that are fighting against you. You have to allow the unnecessary discomfort to work in your favor. It's necessary to be irritated. It's necessary to be annoyed. Why? Because it produces action. It's going to make you do something. It's going to make you get up. It's going to make you affected. It's going to make you infected. It's going to make you move. It's going to make you a compassionate. It's going to make you get up and not just be a hearer of the word. You're going to be a doer of the word. Amen. So these are reasons why the, and the discomfort was sent. So now we're down to Psalms 37, 24 through 25. He allows, why he allows discomfort is necessary. He says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord holds him up with his hand. Amen. I have been young and now am old, yet I have seen the righteous for I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Amen. The word of God said when you go through unnecessary, when you go through necessary discomforts, he said you're not going to be forsaken. The word of God tells you, David sure as he was young and now he is old. But he was young and now he is old. And he has never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. That's for those that are saved. Amen. I thank the Lord for my salvation every day. I do not take it for granted. I don't take for granted the time I get to call on the name of the Lord in Psalms 50 and 15. When there is un unnecessary discomfort in your life. Go to Psalm 50, 15. He said, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. There it is again. That word glorify, glory, amen. When we're talking in 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Excuse me, 16 through 18. In verse 17, it tells you it's working for your uh, a far exceeding eternal weight of glory. Amen. That is part of the discomfort. The suffering is to create glory. It's to bring glory to God. It's to bring glory to the Savior. It's to bring glory to his name. It's to bring glory to the blood of Jesus. It's to bring glory to the finished work on the cross. It's to bring glory to the Lord. It's to bring glory to Jesus. Did you know that? When you go through discomforts and you last through them and he renew you, he perfect, establish, and settle you, you can go back and tell people the good news of what God has done. That the discomfort won't last forever. What it say? It's an irritation that's annoying. Amen. It's not going to last forever, but it's just enough to make you do something about it. I got one more scripture. Psalms 147, 3 through 5. All of the reasons why the, un the necessity of discomfort. Amen. The necessity of discomfort. We need discomfort. It makes us do something. It stops us from being selfish. It makes us get up and care about our neighbors. Amen. Psalms 147, 3 through 4, 3 through 5. Amen. This is reason why he allows discomfort. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the numbers of the stars. He calls them by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Amen. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He allows necessity. It's a necessity for discomfort. But God is the one that can put you back together. You are playing the hands of the potter. He is able to put you back together better than you was before. It's the grace of God be upon your life. Lord, I just pray 
for everyone that's going to watch this broadcast. That if they catch it on the replay, Lord God, bless them. Bless their homes, Lord. Bless them in their season of discomfort. Bless them, Lord God, through challenges that they may not understand. Let them know that it is working for them a greater weight of glory, Lord. But we have, we want to glorify you in all that we do. Teach us how to honor you with our testimony. Teach us how to honor you with our words. Teach us how to honor you with our ministries. Teach you how teach us how to honor you with our actions. Teach us how to honor you with our prayers and our gifts, Lord God. Our talents and our anointing, Lord God. Let it be about saving souls. Let it be about setting the captives free. I thank and praise you for every open door. I thank and praise you for every seed sown. I thank and praise you for every person to partner with this ministry. That they will be blessed, Lord God. That the anointing to reach across the world, they will help to send that. And they will be a part of what they will be blessed as well, Lord God. To send the gospel to those that need to hear it to those that are bruised, those that are hurting, those that need to be bound up, that need to be healed by the precious love of the Savior and the finished work of the cross, the blood of Jesus can heal any wound. He is the healer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You guys have an awesome Sunday and bless you. This is the Apostle.